Ladies and gentlemen, Imus in the morning. Get out of my mind. That was uh, June 1st, 1968 in Palmdale, California. So um, I actually talked over the intro. I was so nervous. But it's a cold open, you know. Um, before I um, get started here, I, I, I do need to mention Michael Lynn and Robert Andrews um, and Deirdre Imus. Um, Particularly did her. You know how uh, when you're like when you love somebody, but then it, you you get this feeling in your chest, and you can actually feel it in your heart. Yeah. That's the way I feel about her. Hmm. And the role that she's played in my life is just gonna stop it. So, and the same with Michael Lynn and Robert Andrews, who I talk to almost every day. So I, and you, I've talked about them through the years, and you know. I think you have a good idea what they mean to me, and I just wanted to mention. That might be remiss if I didn't mention Vinnie Andrews. He's the reason I don't ever have to work again, ever. So. And uh, Esther Newberg was great, and she's a great agent, and she'll make one more deal. Come on, baby. Should make one more deal. <laughs> then the great Martin Garbus, one of the uh, one of the great trial attorneys in the history of jurisprudence. I remember when I got in all that trouble. He didn't know whether he wanted to take the case or not. He he didn't know who I was. He didn't was I a racist or a bigot or all that. I had to, he interviewed me, and of course he. Discovered I wasn't and took the case and we won, obviously. So. Well, so let me just, I, I don't know how I, if, I, if I can get through this or not. You know, I'm going to do the best I can. Um, but I'll tell you what I've been thinking about. I, I, I thought I was going to have some more time to think about what this meant stopping doing this. Uh, but I didn't, and it's, and it's good. Because somebody said, well, well, are you going to miss this? And I did not, I didn't have an answer. But I do now. I'm not going to miss um, doing the Ibis and Wayne program. It's been a lot of fun, but, man, it's hard to do. I mean, everybody on this program will tell you, it's hard to do. And um, it was hard to do when Charles was here. Quit, quit. No. And when Charles left, quit. I mean... No. No, no, I really no, thought that was no. it. I, I, I'm sure you did too. And then uh, here we here comes Connell. So we 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 got another five six years out of this bitch, you know. But um, the, 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 there's no more left. So, but I'm not going to miss that. I mean, we did. I mean, I know this in my heart. I've always thought this. There's been nobody ever better on the radio than me, and I mean that. And I'm not patting myself on the back or anything. I'm just telling you. But I'm telling you how it is. Nobody ever did this. Nobody. But it wasn't me who did it. And this is, may sound patronizing, but you know me and you know it's not. You know what I'm going to miss? I'm going to miss you. Because... Uh, It was great. It is great. To get all excited about something, like a record or a book or just some event or, you know, why I did something or Zach did something, you know. Um, come in here and tell you about it. Because uh, you were the one 
And I don't know who you is, you know, I never, I, I, but I always thought, and I still think I'm talking to one person, but I never decided who that person was. I didn't decide, I didn't know if you were a male or a female or how old you were or what, but I just knew that there was one person there that, um, that I talked to and uh, that would listen to me. You know, did uh, or White or Zach or, or, or Michael Lynn or Robert Ann, none of these people. They, they, it's not the same thing. They, 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 they don't want to hear about Alger Hiss, but you did. And look what we did. I mean, look what we did. I ask you, um, take the ranch, for example. I was talking to Dick Grasso, my friend from New York Stock Exchange. And we'd already bought the ranch with my own money. I said, how in the hell am I going to raise enough money for this ranch? He said, uh, well, why don't you sell commemorative acres? I said, how much? He said, well, 5000 Is anybody going to give me $5,000 for an anchor that they don't, for an acre they don't own? What are you, nuts? And so I remember sitting there in Southport, Connecticut. Oh. Well, did I said, I got the hound. Like, what's going on here the next morning? Try to raise money for the ranch. So I just I thought, this is insane. Do you know that we could not take the phone calls fast enough? The lines were jammed selling acres at five thousand dollars an acre. Do you know that that first morning we raised almost five million dollars? You and I did that. You remember that? You did that. You gave me that money. And the next morning, you gave me another four and a half million dollars. What are you, crazy? Every time I ask you for something, you gave it to me. You did that. Remember when Bill White came to us and with the intrepid fallen heroes fund? Remember when we went to Walter Reed? Bernie remembers that. Saw those young people with no arms and legs, and they wanted to go back. You know why they wanted to go back? They wanted to go back to fight, not for their country, for each other. You gave me $200 million at least. Every time I asked you for something, you said, all right, here. And when I got, well, look at the times I got fired. Look, I got fired in the 70s. I went back to Cleveland. And you went back with me. And then we came back to New York, didn't we? Yeah, we did. And then I got fired again. And you were there with me then? Something to sound like a real pussy, aren't I? <laughs> he says, I gotta get this together. So I'm going to miss you, I'm talking to you. And what you did for me and what you've done for this country. Look at the Imus Ranch, what you did for this kid, that was you. I mean, there's been some wonderful things said about me. And they're, they're, I know I sound like a jerk, but they're right. I mean, there's nobody, nobody's ever done what I've done, ever. But you do understand that I understand that it wasn't just me. I mean, you understand that. But it was you and me. We did that. We did all of it. I'm going to miss that. I mean, I will, uh, I'll see you out on the road, you know, at the rodeo or wherever I am. I'm going to do one more big thing, remember that? <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't, you know, I've never told you anything I didn't do. But uh, thank you.
I know you're going to miss me. But man, you have no idea. You have no idea how much I'm going to miss you. I wrote this down and um, I want you to remember this. We were neither dissuaded nor diminished by the intellectually, morally, and ethically crippled losers, the likes of a racist, bigoted civil rights charlatan, or the insecure, envious, shock jock all howling in a chorus of like-minded yapping mutts lost in the dust of the caravan rolling by on the road to greatness. Rolling by on the road to greatness. We did that. You did that. I did that. That's what we did. Right. That's what we did. I've been on the cover of the Rolling Stone I met the president when I was half stoned I've been so high, I've gotten confused I've been beat down, broken, used Motherfucker, I drank with Hank Talked blues with Billy Rocked with Ron Sang with Shotgun Willie Went from small time Billy to big time Bobby Something new, I had a real good time. I just love the wine. I love the women and song and the carrying on. I had a real good time. Well, there's a big old world of opportunity for a man who sings the blues. You learn a lot more about life from the things you're not supposed to do. I got away with women keeps them coming around. That's the kind of thing that you don't turn down. I had a real good time. I just love the wine.